I think we all have that one trip, the one we want to take, the one we know will challenge us, the one we know we need to be prepared for. For the last three years, the Pony Express Trail has been that trip for me. I have talked about it around almost every campfire and even attempted it once only to be turned back. But my history with this trail isn't nearly as exciting as the true story that is the Pony Express. The Pony Express is more than historic, it's legendary. It operated for only 18 months between 1860 and 1861. Founded by three men, William Hepburn Russell, Alexander Majors, and William Bradford Waddell, who were fighting to get out of hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt following the Utah War, the Pony Express became living lore. From the tracks of the Pony Express, we have the Wild West American tales of Buffalo Bill Cody, Wild Bill Hickok, to the gunslinger Jack Slade and the white Indian boy Uncle Nick Wilson. Not only did they carry the mail, the Pony Express carried the future of the Western United States on its back and broke the trail for the Telegraph and later the Transcontinental Railroad, leading to household names like Wells Fargo and American Express. And the Utah Territory was right in the heart of it all. This is episode one of Sagebrush and Salt Flats, brought to you by Agility Customs, Heretic Studio, Onyx Off-Road, Scrub Blade Wipers, Super Chips, and Trail Racks. A key reason for me making this series on the Pony Express is to inspire you. Every year I see new overlanders chase down trails like Black Bear Pass or Fins and Things, and as cool as those day trails are, they aren't overlanding. In fact, even this four day trip can barely be called overlanding. But if you truly want a multi-day off-road adventure, then you should plan to do the Pony Express Trail. And I know you can do it. I brought my buddy, Jevin Dovey, a novice off-roader with me to show you that you are capable of experiencing this incredible trail. My name is Jevin Dovey and I run a YouTube channel named Jevin Dovey, but I've been doing YouTube for like five years now. And a lot of what I do is filmmaking and I try to do it in more like the adventure space. So I do a lot of like outdoor and adventure style filmmaking tutorials as well as, you know, I like to go and do adventures. Not really sure what to expect, but I've recently been building out my Jeep because of, you know, we're all stuck at home and we can't really jump on a plane. So I started building out my Jeep to do more local adventures and basically become like my mobile production rig where I can go anywhere and go shoot stories and make videos for here on YouTube. Come on in, kick back, enjoy yourself. Come on in, kick back, enjoy yourself. Come on in, and unwind, it's time to relax. Come on in, kick back, kick back. Come on in. We go donuts, flossing like the flow dust. Hop up in the Uber, bring some Swisher sweets and crow. Along the route of the Pony Express, you'll find markers like this one, like this big monolith thing. And others are just posts in the ground. Some are just plackets, whatever. They're all along the trail because pony stations were every 10 to 15 miles. So because we're trying to complete this thing in just a few days, we will not be stopping at every single one of them. This is what they look like or are like. And if you do the trail, you're welcome to stop, but we're gonna keep cruising. Kick back, enjoy yourself. One nice thing about the Pony Express Trail here in Utah is the maintenance. I mean, we're out here in January and look, these guys are out here, they're skidding the trail. So uh, if you do only want to do a portion of it, you can go Salt Lake to Wendover basically and it's reasonably passable. So super cool to see guys out here this time of year putting work in and uh, making the trail drivable. 
So, cheers to them. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I'm a Just a few hours into the trail and we have arrived at our first major Pony Express stop of the trip, Simpson Springs. Simpson Springs was originally named Egan Spring for explorer Howard Egan, but later renamed after Captain James H. Simpson. This stop is unique because it features a replica of the station house that stood here during operation. Captain Simpson is important to the Pony Express and frankly, all of US history because he was one of the key contributors to developing not only the route for the Pony Express, but also for the Telegram and the Transcontinental Railroad. As you travel along the Pony Express Trail, you'll see that a large portion of the stops are named after springs. This is intentional as the route was designed to follow natural water outlets to keep horses and riders hydrated for their long rides. Let's go check in with Jevin, see how he's doing. So, I think I lost all my filters. I had it, my filter case is nice and open right here. I think we just drove off without it. Um, man, that sucks. Jevin may have lost some filters and we've gotta go back in time, which means back down the trail. Which means it's gonna put us in camp at night. Yeah, in the dark, in the cold. My, uh, my biggest concern with backtracking to find his filters is it's about 30 miles back. And the hope is that we still have enough fuel to reach our first fuel stop tomorrow. Fingers crossed, let's find some filters. I think we have a pretty good idea as to where Jevin may have lost his uh, filter case. And if you don't know what we mean by filter case, it's not like water filters or anything. There are uh, camera filters that go on the lens and uh, they're not cheap. So he lost a full case of them and we're pretty sure that they were left at that uh, last monolith area, the last monument for, that we stopped at. And uh, we did a little drive-by shot and he may have left them on the fender before we drove away. So. That is where we are heading on the map. It doesn't seem like it's going to be too bad to get to it and then get back. Um, I'm just hoping that they're there because if I had lost them, I would have totally gone back for them. And although he was a little skeptical thinking, hey man, let's not do it. I would have really loved the support in, in return to go get them. So, if I were in his shoes, I would just be keeping my fingers crossed because as remote as this area can get, it still does see a fair amount of travel. So uh, hopefully someone didn't find them and pick them up and run off with them and that they're still where we hope they are. Maybe it's further than I thought. Ah, there it is. I see it. Okay, now is your filter up here is the big question. Dude, it's right there on the ground. I see it. <laughs> hey, look at that. Shimoda kept it dry. There's all my filters. All of them are in there. Yep. It looks like, I mean, look what? at the dent in the snow. It got ran over. Oh shit. So what, oh yeah, that's definitely the ND filter. Let's see if it survives. Woo -hoo! Look at that. No way. It got run over and it still survived. This is not sponsored by Moment, but um, they make good filters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause look, you can see the rectangle of the case. <laughs> that's hilarious. That saved me a few hundred dollars. Wow. Okay. So you think we'll have enough gas now that we just drove an extra 30 miles? You know, I think we will. Cause I planned, so my 17 gallons can okay. make the whole trip almost. Oh. So I think we're good. Okay. It's so just the snow is the unpredictable portion. Got it. 
Look at that sexy Jeep over there. Oh yeah, let's look. Oh. Cool Rick, being cool. Holy cow. I cannot believe that we found that. I honestly, that was, that was a good thing. And I mean, yeah, it was kind of far away, but it wasn't as far away as I thought it was gonna be. So I'm, I'm actually, <laughs> oh, that is just good freaking news. That is good news. Oh man. Okay, so now we gotta backtrack our backtrack and uh, get back past Simpson Springs and cruise on from there to, I wanna say it's the um, bird refuge, Fish Springs. So that's where we're trying to get from. Simpson Springs to Fish Springs. Everything's a spring. We're back at Simpson Springs. Just had a quick little bite. And uh, our peanut butter was frozen. So we had jelly sandwiches. Quite delicious. So, Simpson Springs. Feel like I've been here once already today. <laughs> oh. It is segments of the trail like this one where you realize they were literally trying to get there as fast as they could because this is nothing but a straight shot. Just a straight line across this. And uh, it has been for the last 30 minutes just driving in a straight line. Straight, very straight. I'm just checking the map here and it looks like we've got like another 55 miles to camp. Um, as I remember from last time, I think this next part goes pretty quick, so we should be okay. But it's definitely looking like we're gonna be pulling into camp in the dark. Um, we haven't even gotten to the Fish Springs Wildlife Refuge. So that's kind of our next target. But following that, as I remember, the roads are pretty quick. Uh, so fingers crossed that we can gain some ground here in the next little bit. As you can see, the sun is setting. Uh, I would have liked to have passed through here about two or three hours ago, but that's just the way things go sometimes. It just takes a little bit of time. So we are passing through the Fish Springs Wildlife Refuge. Uh, this was once a Pony Express stop somewhere in here. I don't necessarily think they have a marker as to where it was in the refuge. Uh, most of this now is obviously the wildlife refuge and then a wilderness study. So it's kind of hands off except for the one part of road that we're on. So we're going to get through this and then, boy, it's another decent amount of trail until we find camp. Definitely getting there after dark. There's no way around it now. Just as we popped out on the west side of the Fish Springs Wildlife Refuge, we were lucky to see a firing off the side of the road. We decided right there that the best move would be to pull over and set up camp here instead of trying to make it through the dark to where I camped in October. I was just walking around the Jeep after we pulled up to camp here and noticed something. So it's just on par with the rest of the day, but my rear fender is coming loose. I don't think it's a big deal. Pretty sure I could just snap it into place before getting camp set up, which reminds me, let me show you where we found a spot to camp at. Our camp spot is at the Fish Springs Station. How freaking cool is this? And the views are spectacular. It is so pretty. What a cool spot. Super excited we found it. Uh, I think this is better than trying to drive to a spot in the dark and we'll just plan to try and make up that ground tomorrow. So 
Let's get stuff set up. Let's do this. Now that camp is set up, let's cook. Now five minutes in and I cut my finger. So what happened? Uh, we were trying to cool shoot this like cool B-roll sequence. And what happened? I uh, sliced my finger real good. Like dripping good. Don't drip it on the food. I'm going to. Woo. Luckily, Jevin can handle a chef's knife, so it was up to him to get the stir fry going. And with that, our bellies were full and our adventure belts had a few more notches on them. It was now time to relax and catch up by the fire before turning in. This is not the end of the journey. This is only part one of our trip along the Pony Express. In the next episode, Jevin and I get further down the trail while fighting against time and trail conditions. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be here when the journey continues. Until next time, I'm Justin B. McBride.